Hey there, so what you're looking at right here is my brand new home NAS. This is a system that I put together myself in the case that you see here, the Johnsbo N3. Now I've been needing a new NAS for a while now to have somewhere to actually store all the footage from all of the videos that I make. I already have a NAS server that really originally only functioned as a Plex server that I started to put footage onto, but that quickly started to eat through all of my storage. So I decided to bite the bullet and just buy a bunch of parts to put together a whole brand new system that is going to be dedicated just for that storage. The already existing server is going to keep doing what it's doing as a Plex server. All of my footage is going to get transferred over to this. Now, when I was piecing together what I was going to use on this system, the case itself proved to be kind of a problem. See, it is a 8-bay NAS case, which is great. 8 bays in a pretty small package like this is kind of groundbreaking in terms of just overall storage density for a DIY case. The problem is ITX boards don't really have this many slots, or rather ports for SATA connections. Most ITX boards out there you're going to find are going to have two to four SATA ports, which means to fully populate this, you're going to need another solution. Now you can always use a PCI card that gives you more SATA ports, but now you just lost your PCI connection. There are also cards out there that are little M.2 adapters that will slot into an M.2 slot and that will give you six SATA ports, but then you lose your M.2 and if you have the M.2 on the back of your board, then it is not usable. So there is a lot of planning that needs to go into a system on a case like this. This isn't something that you can just randomly buy parts and hope everything works as I ended up running into while working on this system. See, I thought I had a five head idea because I actually already had a ITX board laying around. It is a Z170 gigabyte ITX motherboard and the CPU that I had with it is the i5-6600K. I've had just this system laying around doing nothing for a while now. And what's interesting about this motherboard is that it actually has six SATA ports on it. It has four of them on this angled connector here, and then it has two of them on the board itself. So this is perfect because of the fact that I only bought six hard drives to throw into the system. So it's perfectly ideal, and if I want to expand to the other two there, I could always get a PCIe card, but that's really only if I need to, and that leaves a PCI slot for me to actually do whatever I want with it. Now this does mean that the system is going to be on a i5 from Intel 6th generation, but that should be more than adequate for just a storage server where I'm just going to be throwing video files onto here. You know, people have been using systems with Celerons from 10 years ago to do this kind of work, so this is really just overkill for what this system is going to be doing. Unfortunately, because of the fact that it is that i5 from 6th gen, it kind of limits what I can do in terms of if I want to start doing things with VMs or anything like that. But there's still a crazy amount of services that I am going to be able to run off of this thing. And I plan on actually running a bunch of game servers on this specific system. So we're going to actually see if that's going to function perfectly fine. But I have faith. And if not, we can always throw in more powerful hardware in here down the line. One thing I do want to specify, though, is that building with this case, one thing you need to account for is that you need to be very sure about the measurements of everything here and you actually need to put a lot of thought into the entire process. I kind of just went into this willy-nilly and it really ended up causing me a lot of issues. First and foremost, the way that the power supply is positioned on this system, it's essentially mounted right here right next to the actual motherboard and the way that it's positioned meant that the right angled SATA connections would not come out with a normal cable. So a Effectively, four of the SATA ports would now be useless if I had a SFX power supply in here. So already with a small power supply, I didn't have the space to actually be able to use the SATA ports that were pivotal to this entire build. Luckily, I was actually able to 
to find these little adapters on Amazon that essentially let you turn these right angle co connectors into connections that are pointing straight up. So I ended up ordering these and thankfully and ended up fitting perfectly in there. Another problem that I actually ended up running into with the case though is the fact that when you're mounting the power supply, be sure to actually plug in the connection for the power supply before you fully mount it down. So if you forgot to plug it in, you're not going to be able to actually get it in there. This was a problem that I actually ended up running into and it becomes extremely annoying and it's little things like that that end up becoming problems that if you didn't really think about it and actually have it planned out, it will become a problem. So just expect that if you're going to be using the N3, it is one of the smallest cases you can get out there, if not the smallest one you can get that lets you have eight drives. Now, cooler wise, I did end up going with this thermal right low profile cooler. It's nothing fancy and really I'm going to lower the TDP of the CPU anyway. I'm going to bring it down to 65 watts. I could leave it at the stock 95. I mean, the system is really not going to be doing much most of the time anyway. It's not even going to be running a Plex server or anything like that. It's literally going to be game servers, some services, and of course, it's going to be hosting the NAS that is going to hold all of my footage. So I don't really need to adjust anything. It's really not going to be doing much at all most of the time, but I did it anyway, just in case if it decides to pick up speed in terms of the fan, though really the biggest issue is actually those hard drives and I guess we could talk about the hard drives that I actually ended up going with I ended up picking up a bunch of essentially refurbished drives and I know that's a controversial choice out there. A lot of people really hate the idea of using these drives. I've used them before and I have not had any issues with any of them, but this is the largest amount of them that I've ever bought at once. So I actually ended up picking up four 10 terabyte drives and two 12 terabytes. The reason I got the two 12 terabytes was because they were actually on sale where they were pretty much the exact same price as the 10 terabytes. But on Amazon, they only had two of them in stock. So I picked those up and then I filled up the rest with just 10 terabyte drives. Now I screwed myself there because I was just being impatient. The 12 terabyte drives were back in stock literally the next day. So I could have had all 12 terabyte drives and gone with what I originally planned on going with, which was true NAS. But because now I have mismatched drives, I'm pretty much going to be going with Unraid. Now I've used Unraid before. That's currently the NAS that I use is running on Unraid. I'm very familiar with it and I'm a huge fan of it, but I know that because they are a paid operating system, a lot of people out there aren't big fans of it. Personally, I think it's worth it, especially if all you care about is getting a NAS set up and get services up and running. It really is one of the fastest ways of doing it. I'm not paid by them or anything like that. I'm just a fan of their product and I've been a customer of theirs for almost 10 years now. So I don't really have too much of a problem using it here, though. What I would have liked to have done is use true NAS with ZFS, but really, again, the mismatched drives pretty much killed all of that. I really should have just been patient and waited another day. I just didn't know that those 12 terabyte drives would come back in stock like that. So I could have had actually more storage and I would have been able to use true NAS. But Unraid is perfectly fine. And again, I'm a fan of them anyway. When it comes to actually mounting the drives in this system, it's a little odd in that it doesn't actually have its own dedicated railings or anything like that for the drives. You essentially end up putting just these rubber bumpers on the mounting holes on the drives itself and then you kind of also just mount this rubber handle onto it and that's it past that you kind of just slide it in there and it kind of just clicks into the back interface there it's certainly not awful and i mean once the drives are in there they're in there they're not going to really move and so far i haven't seen any issues with it but it is a little odd the way they went about doing it Cooling wise, the system does come with two fans in the back, though they really don't really seem to do much of a good job at all, at least from what I've experienced so far, since Unraid seems to be tell me that these drives are cooking sometimes. And when I put my hand right next to these fans, I feel absolutely no air coming out. So the stock fans don't really seem to be great. I might need to replace those. Now, after waiting an entire day for the Raid parody check to 
finish and all of the drives to be cleared and everything just to make sure that everything is working so far the smart readings show that all the drives are perfectly fine there doesn't seem to be any errors or anything like that so fingers crossed nothing bad happens of course the way the system is configured is one of the 12 terabyte drives is a parity drive the other one is storage and of course all of the rest of the drives that are 10 terabytes are also storage as you saw i really can't expand out in terms of more drives even though i have the two open slots without using up my pci slot especially since the m.2 on this motherboard is in the back i would have liked to have had that pcie slot open but realistically speaking with the hardware that's in this system right now i don't really have much of an option in terms of what i would want to do with a pci slot anyway it's not like it's a fantastic cpu that's in there i'm not going to be hosting a vm where i want to pass through a gpu and since i'm not going to be hosting plex or anything like that i don't need any kind of gpu for hardware acceleration so if i do need to expand out i will need to use that pcie slot but at this point i'm really just convinced that it doesn't really matter that being said i really like this case I almost wish I had an excuse to just put a more powerful system in here, but I really don't need that and I really don't see a reason to overcomplicate a NAS build like this. I just want to set it up and just kind of leave it running for pretty much ever. So no point in going extreme with it, but overall it looks really nice. It's extremely small, which means that I have a lot of options in terms of where I can actually put it and it actually lets me repurpose a lot of old hardware, the CPU, motherboard, RAM and SSD are all hardware that I already had laying around so the only new things that I needed to buy were just the case and the hard drives and I also bought the cooler the power supply I actually also already had laying around though I did buy a power supply to replace it since it was being used on a system that was actually functional though because of the fact that I'm reusing a power supply that I've used before this power supply I actually got from a pre-built system from Corsair a while ago. Though I guess it wasn't really a pre-built system, rather a pre-bundle kit. That it was the motherboard, a Corsair ITX case, even though the thing was ginormous. And it was essentially just that gigantic case, the power supply, and this specific motherboard. So I've had those now for years. And even though I stopped using that case because it was enormous, I pretty much kept the motherboard and the power supply since then though the cables that it came with are just extremely tiny so i had to use these extension cables to actually get it to all function here so things are a little not great in terms of spacing in here but really again the system's really not going to be doing much of anything most of the time so it's not a problem and it so far has not been a problem so would i recommend the john's bow n3 well kind of yeah i mean it's if you want a compact case where you can fit up to eight drives, this is pretty much it. You just really need to think about how exactly are you going to get those eight drives. Make sure that you're picking a motherboard that has the SATA connections that you need and an easy way of actually expanding out. If you don't plan on using the PCIe slot, then it's very easy to just get a card that will let you plug in all of the SATA ports that you want. But if you actually plan on hooking up a graphics card or a capture card or anything like that, any kind of PCIe device that you would like to pass through or really just use on the native system, if let's say you want to use SATA SSDs or rather NVMe SSDs on a card, well, you're going to need that PCIe slot. So now you have to think about, well, okay, can I sacrifice an M.2 to maybe expand that with some SATA ports? But you need to be aware of the location of that. So really overall, it's an interesting situation that you could find yourself in with this case if you don't think this stuff through. Overall, I'm happy with the results that I've gotten with this case. The NAS has been doing a pretty great job. I'm currently in the middle of transferring over all of my footage from the other NAS onto here so that the other one can just fully be dedicated to Plex and nothing else is going to run on there that is a third party software. All of that is now going to be running on here and i think that the hardware on this system is going to be 
great for what I wanted to do. I mean, a lot of the services that were running on the other system, I mean, it's a Celeron, a 30, a G3930. That's what I was running a bunch of things on. So this is already an upgrade. The IPC uplift, the clock speed uplift, it's going to be a noticeable improvement. And because of the fact that Plex isn't going to have to be running on the back in the background 24 seven, that just op for opens up more resources for a lot of the other services that I'm going to be running. So all in all, this is a pretty great upgrade for myself. I'm really happy with it. And honestly, I do recommend this case as long as the limitations of ITX are not going to be a problem for you. This is really, really fantastic.